Hey everyone, and welcome back to Note Pro. If you're new to this channel, I review watches, conduct drop tests on them, reveal hidden features in cars, say things which you don't hear quite often on YouTube, it does not scratch at level 6, and it does not have deeper grooves at level 7. And oh yeah, I also conduct the most extreme torture tests. I've frozen this watch to minus 24 degrees Celsius. Now back to the video. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Lawtech Pro. Today's video is going to be a bit different. It's only going to be one single take. So if I stutter, stammer, or if I mess up, you're going to see it. Well, why am I making this video? Well, it's because this watch, which I'm wearing right now, is the best watch in the world. Why? Let me tell you. There's three things every watch should follow. First, it needs to keep time accurately, which this does, because it has multiband 6. And second of all, it needs to be legible. The dial needs to be easy to read, and the numbers should be visible in all angles, maybe even up to 180 degrees. And third of all, this is very important. You should be able to wear your watch everywhere you go, in every single situation which this does. Therefore, this is why I think this $500 or $800 watch is better than this. A Patek. I'm holding more than tens of thousands of dollars in my right hand right now. But I still prefer this. Why? Because first of all, it doesn't keep time that accurately. If you forget to set it properly, it's gone. There's nothing you can do about it. This has millisecond precision because it automatically syncs with the towers. But when you set this, you only get up to one second at most. And second of all, look at this. Which is easier to read? It's obviously the Mudmaster. This, it's not that easy to read. Look at that. If you tilt it at this angle, it's not so easy to read the Patek. And the most important part of this is you can't wear this watch for everything. I've used the Mudmaster for a variety of activities. Rock climbing, going through mud. Yes, I actually went through mud with this Mudmaster. I went swimming with this, played cricket with this, played basketball, every single thing. And it has survived everything that I've thrown at it. This is true luxury. Not this, which is supposed to baby about everywhere. And then there's this, a Rolex. Looks good, right? But again, the same three points, it does not cover that. First of all, it's easier to read this than the Patek because the R markers are larger. But the problem with this is durability. I mean, look at this. The glass comes up right to the edge of the bezel. And I don't know if it's seen on camera, but there are, there's already two or three chips in the glass. But this, because the bezel surrounds the glass and the sapphire is inlaid inside at a very large depth, it's protected from impacts. See what I just did there? You can't do that with this. If you do it, it's gone. And you need to pay Rolex thousands of dollars to fix it again. And then there's this. It's a Breguet, Breguet. I don't know how to pronounce it. Again, this is off script, so I, so I haven't learned any of the names, pronunciations, or anything. I know, you must be thinking, how can I compare a G-Shock to one of these? A genuine Swiss watch. But that's the whole point. Both of them are watches. And the Mudmaster, or the Master, as I like to call it, is the best at what it does. It has, it has one single purpose, to tell you the time accurately, every place, 
every time. This, this can't do that. Of course, this is water resistant up to, what does it say here? 100 meters. But this is water resistant up to 200 meters. You may think who's gonna die for 200 meters or so, but that's besides the point. If you go swim, swimming with this, right? It is more capable of taking you and telling you the time every single place than this. And then there's another one of the Brugier. Which one is this? 2240, I guess. 10 hertz. And it's very beautiful indeed. I mean, look at how intricate this is. The problem with this is, again, the same. It's simply not up to the standards of a G-Shock in terms of durability. And again, the dial isn't as legible. The hour markers, the minute markers, it's simply not there, right? It's only 2D, but this, it has a 3D face design. So, you know why I think this is better than all those Swiss watches? But why do I also think it's better than any other G-Shock? For example, the Rangeman, which I like to call the Rock. Well, it's because of this one simple reason. The Rangeman is too heavy for daily use. And look at this. Remember about the legibility I talked about? The Rangeman, it just can't match the Mudmaster, right? And then look at this. This is the full metal square. And it's a bit of a faff to use, really, because of the buckle and everything else. The buttons are another important aspect of why I prefer the Mudmaster over any other G-Shock I have ever owned. I mean, look at the size. You can easily press this with your thumb, the whole part of your thumb. Like the entire part but this you need to use your thumbnail right and it's simply not as comfortable as this because the mud master has these near the lugs so these are some extenders or pull or tabs you may say which fit your wrist properly but this this is a smaller watch but just Look at the fit. You see that? It leaves a huge amount of gap between your wrist and the bottom of the lug. But then observe this. On the master, that isn't an issue at all. See? The master is the most comfortable watch I have ever worn. I mean, it's the most comfortable to wear. And then there's this. I forgot the name of this. Oh, I think it's the GGP100. This is a disgrace to the Mudmaster family. Because, first of all, it doesn't have tough solar. And it was supposed to be the sequel to this. The original Mudmaster GWG1000. And it simply can't match it. First off, the quality. It's pathetic. I bought this watch because it was a limited edition one. It's the British Army Mudmaster. But the quality, it's just pathetic. I mean, you can't even compare them. This, it just feels so soft and supple, the strap. This, it's rough and it's too stiff. And then look at this. The motor is simply not as fast. For example, if I press the light and the mode button together, nothing happens. But then on this, it's so easy. If you want to see the digital display, you just do that. I think it's also there on this, but somehow it doesn't activate all the time. I 
and then look at this. You can just see the difference in terms of the finish. For example, the buttons around the Mudmaster, I mean the area around the buttons of the Mudmaster, they have these special gaskets, right? They're metal gaskets. And look at this. Everything, even around the buttons, it's finished in metal. But then look at this. It's just plain resin. I know it's carbon fiber reinforced resin, but still it's resin, right? And look at the back plate. This is the biggest difference. Sure, this is a carbon core guard, but would it really hurt to make a metal back plate? Because metal simply feels better on your wrist. It just feels cold and it feels alive. Like you, you have something living on your wrist and not just some plastic toy. You see, after Casio started making these metal versions of their famous watches, I thought, why can't they do the same for the Mudmaster? Of course, not make it fully metal because that would just lose the durability and toughness. But I thought, why couldn't they just keep the internals the same, the same button layout, everything, but just improve the shortcomings? For example, this is plastic and the buttons they're not that easy to, pro to uh, press, right? So look at that. Can you see it? Your whole finger, the top of your finger, it gets red after pressing these buttons because they're so well protected from mud, dust and water that it's frankly impossible to press it without hurting your fingers. So that's one aspect they should have improved on, which I kept thinking about every single time I used the Mudmaster or accessed any of the features like the compass or altitude. And that brings me on to why the Mudmaster is so great. You see, you may say that the Mudmaster isn't capable of delivering notifications or tracking the amount of steps or your heart rate, right? Or how far you've run, like this, the GBD H1000. But the thing is, it wasn't designed for that. If you buy the Mudmaster, you make a statement. You know you're self-assured of who you are. You don't need a stupid watch to track your fitness stats, right? You count it yourself, you do it in your own head. And then look at this. Right? The same issue as the Rangeman or the Rock. You tilt it slightly away from you and the display is not legible at all, right? And even the quality, both of these cost around the same. And look at this. I know this is supposed to be a sports watch, but the checkered buttons on the Mudmaster grip your fingers better than this nonsense of a button right look at that it's just scratchy resin all around the mud master on the other hand has soft touch materials and the durability is just insane look at this this is a watch that i've been wearing daily for five years now even though i have many other new watches like these right because these simply cannot match the Mudmaster for its all-purpose, all-weather usefulness, right? This watch, you can wear it anywhere. You can wear it with a suit, you can wear it with a normal t-shirt, anything. Because this just goes well with anything, right? Because the quality is just there. If you wear, for example, a range man with a suit, right? Sure, maybe you could pull it off, but it just doesn't look the part. It's just too big, too bulky, and even the finishing. For example, look at these, the screws near the lugs. I've not taken this anywhere near rocks or water, but then 
is all it's already showing some discoloration over here can you see it over there from just this the band keeper alone and even the screws they're all scratched up i don't know what the quality control is just not up to the mark on the rangeman i need to be honest and this i think is the worst g-shock ever made second only to the rangeman which has lugs which are weak as anything right so the rangeman by which i mean the predecessor to this the rangeman gw9400 is the worst g-shock ever made because the lugs over here, right, you can see it's been strengthened by this plastic extension. But on the rangeman, the original one, it doesn't have any of that. You just drop it on the lugs like this, or you just pull the straps like this, and the lugs break. I'm not kidding. Okay, enough of that. Let's get on to the real reason why you're here. The GWG 1000 Mudmaster has a sequel, or a newer version, which is called, of course, the GWG 2000. So I just bought this watch today, a couple of hours ago. I haven't opened the box, nothing. So this is the box that I received from Casio India. I went to their store and uh, Apparently we were celebrating Casio's 25th anniversary in India, so they gave me this shopping bag, I guess. Not too sure about what it is. I'll just open it up. Yeah, it is a shopping bag. And they also gave me this. Says coaster. Not sure what that means. Okay. I don't hear music, but I live G Shock. What's this? I don't count my actions. No success without sweat. Rap is something you do. Hip hop is something you live. Speak softly, but carry a big can of paint. And yeah, that's it. So enough of this nonsense. Like who cares about what they provide, right? Let's get on to the real thing. The G-Shock GWG 2000 1A 3DR. So this cost me about 50,000 INR. So this is the box. It has this nice grunge type feeling. This looks like metal or maybe cement with paint that has been washed away. So that is very cool. And on the inside you get The warranty information celebrating 25 25th anniversary of Casio India six months additional warranty so this is the user manual this is the quick start guide for the tough solar operation just set this aside this is the module number if you're wondering so you can search for this on google and you'll get the pdf version of this so this is the international warranty card and this is the information card it says modmaster gwg 2000 wave scepter radio controlled Tough Solar, solar powered, 
it's of course a carbon core card. This, on the other hand, wasn't a carbon core card, but it was still tough as nails. And of course, it's mud resistant, shock resistant, 200 meter water resistant. It's an ABC watch, which means it has a compass, sapphire crystal as well, and a one by 100 second stopwatch. And of course, it has world time. So this is the box on the inside. Feels pretty good. It's soft to the touch. I think it's stainless steel. A very nice box indeed. On the outside it says water resist 20 bar, which is the same as 200 meters water resist. G-Shock since 1983 and of course shock resist. So let's just open this up. And this is the new best watch in the world. Why? Because just look at this. That is simply gorgeous. Right? You may think it's just another mud master. Well, that's because it is. On the inside, the module, everything, it has this exact same functions. The gears, the motors, everything is the same. So what, what they've done is simply upgraded the exterior. The buttons are easier to press. Look at that. That's such a joy to use. Let's go back. Of course, this is some pillow inside. And this is the part that I don't like all the time. You see, you have these <clears throat> price tags or information tags. My voice is going there. That's the problem with doing single takes. So this is shock resistant, mud resistant, 200 meter water resistant. That's the triple sensor version three. That it's, it has compass, thermometer, altimeter, and barometer. And of course, sapphire crystal and Super Illuminator. The rest have already read it. It's a wave scepter, radio control, multi-region Japan, USA, Europe, and most of China. And of course, it's a tough solar, solar powered. So this is the model information. And now onto the tough part, removing this. You see, this is the time where I usually drink some water Turn off the cameras and get this price tag or information tag out of the way. But since I'm doing it in one take, I can't do any of that. Just bear, bear with me here. And yes, that's it. Done. So I'll just move this, all of this out of the way so we can have a good look at the watch. Look at that. It's basically a mirror image of the GWG 1000 Mud Monster, right? Even the button placements, the size, everything is the same. It's as if Casio saw this and said, hmm, we can't change the internals because they're just too good. So let's just change the externals, fix the buttons, make the digital crown out of metal, and it'll be good to go. And honestly, I think it is, because look at it. And of course, this time, the mud master doesn't have any fake screws on it. If you guys didn't know, these screws on the bezel over here, on the original Mudmaster are fake, which means they don't do anything. You can turn them all you want, they don't do anything, doesn't affect the integrity of the watch, nothing, right? Look at this. This has a new type of carbon used in it, right? I forgot the name. 
that's the problem with doing single takes, right? Anyway, let's move on. The button placements, it's written on the back on the original Mod Master. So this is the mode button, that's the display button, this is the com compass button, the altitude button and more. And this, it's the same. Except instead of being written on the back, only like the original Mod Master, it's also written on the front. It says mode over here, display, compass, altitude, and on the back it says the same thing, right? Look at that. This is the difference between the two backs. Of course, the original Modmaster has the better backplate. Why? Well, it's because of this. On the original one, it says, can you read it? Stainless steel back, Japan. But on this, there's a big difference. It says Japan movement, H, case in Thailand. So this is not a made in Japan watch. Now, I don't have anything against Thailand, of course. But the thing is, when you buy a Swiss watch, for example, like this, you want it to be made in Switzerland, right? Patek Philippe of Patek Philippe Geneva, right? It's made in Switzerland. That's the same with this. It's a Japanese engineered watch, so it should be made in Japan, right? But this isn't. Or at least the movement or what's on the inside is still made in Japan. Now, there's one thing that I'm noticing is the display isn't exactly the same. This has a slightly blue tone or tint to it, while this is more subdued, right? Let's check the viewing angles. So on first glance, it appears Casio have... Wait. They may have improved the display quality. Not by much, but it's definitely noticeable. So everything else is the same, right? But if there's one thing the original Mud Master is better than the new one is this. Look at this. The band keeper on the original one says protection G-Shock WR or water resist 20 bar. The attention to detail on the original is simply miles ahead. This may have better quality of materials, right? But this simply has greater attention to detail. For example, look at this. How smoothly the stainless steel back and the button guards on the side integrate with one another compared to this right can you see it it's kind of sudden there's nothing in between them look at the gap here right i should stop saying right but you know what i mean and even the accents on the original are much better for example, look at this. There's yellow here, 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 and even here with the gold. But in this, it's simply not there. There's yellow there, there's red here, then red, red, or orange, you may see, depending on how it looks on camera. Yellow here, yellow here, and there's no yellow anywhere else. But this, it's perfect the match of colors. It just creates a perfect harmony or unity to the whole design. In this, it's broken. It doesn't follow the same design philosophy. And the functions, they're the same, you know. There's absolutely no difference. So first off, this is the home page, you may see, like on your phone. If you press the top left button, that changes the display. So that changes that to the date, date and barometer information, and then back again. The first mode is barometer. Again, same as the original Modmaster. Second, we have temperature. Third, the recall. So you can save your ABC data over here. It also records this, the max altitude, 
the minimum altitude, your ascent, ascent descent, first recording. All of this is done automatically, so you don't need your phone. Everything stays on the watch. And then we have the stopwatch. One is to 100 stopwatch. I've got to say, the button actuation is much better on this new Mudmaster. It's simply miles ahead, right? It's even better than this, the rangeman. Oh, it's out of charge. So I'll just use this. Even though this may be a bad watch, the buttons are actually good. And this simply feels more satisfying than even this. And then we have the timer. You set it using this, you unlock the digital crown. So this is our first look at, at the digital crown. Sorry for the stuttering and stammering. I warned you earlier on. So look at that. That is quality. It's just exquisite. Even the sound it makes is satisfying. This is something you simply don't get with any smartwatch. This is the fine line between a dumb watch and a smartwatch. That is the definition of G-Shock actually. You have these dumb watches like this. And then you have the smartwatches like the Apple Watch. And this, it falls right in between both of them. Because it's smart while not also being too smart. Like it doesn't track your location, it doesn't collect information about you, it doesn't track your social media posts, nothing like that, right? And your data stays with you because it doesn't even get the, get the chance to collect your data, right? That's the whole point of buying. That's it for this video guys, if you stuck around till the end, a sub to the channel would be much appreciated and hit that bell icon so you are notified whenever I make a new upload to gain access to unique perks, behind the scenes content and exclusive members only videos, I suggest you join my channel and reap all the benefits. If you enjoyed watching this video, leave a like and thanks for watching Lotta Crow.